If you are ready to change your life, then you clicked on the right video. This is going to be my best video yet. This is going to be my longest video so far. So I need your full attention. Stop scrolling down to the comments. Take your hand off the mouse. Take your hand off your dick. Just focus. Give me your attention. And I know there's going to be chapters at the bottom of the video where you can look through and be like, oh, let's skip to 50 minutes into the video or however long this video is. Just take your hand off your mouse. Give me your full attention, full screen the video. I swear this is gonna change your life. It's for your own benefit. I'm on your side here, right? This is gonna be a no bullshit guide to how to fix your life. I'm gonna walk you through step by step on pretty much how I did it and how you can do it too. Part one, beliefs and mindset. So before I was able to make any real progress on self-improvement, any real progress towards bettering my life, bettering myself, I had to realize something very important and that is my brain wasn't on my side. Chances are your brain is not on your side. Your brain will try to tell you things to get you to do things that you shouldn't be doing. Every single thought that you have leads to an action and it leads to a choice that you made. And my brain was leading me down the path of self-destruction, leading me down the path of self-pleasure. I was addicted to pleasure and chances are you are in the same situation that I was in. So the first mindset shift you have to have and realize is that your brain is not your friend. So hear me out. This is very important. Okay. We have a lower self and a higher self, right? Our lower self is usually referred to as our lizard brain or the devil straight up. I'm going to refer to it as your lower self your lower self, because that is what helped me out and made it click for me. I was living in my lower self, making choices based on what he wanted, based on what that weak, lower version of myself wanted, that side of your brain that tells you, don't go to the gym, that side of your brain that says, it's okay to sleep in today, it's okay to stay in bed, it's okay to jerk off, it's okay to play video games for 10 hours straight. That's your lower self. At the same time, we have a higher self where he wants what's best for you. That's your best version of yourself. That is who you want to aspire to be. And if you tap into that side of your brain, to that person, to that version of you, and you make decisions for him and based on him, you will be much better off and you'll actually start to make some progress. That is the first mindset shift you have to have. You have to realize that you have a lower self and a higher self. That lower self, that voice will never go away. You will always have that voice. Even after making progress on self-improvement, I still have that voice. But I choose to listen to my higher self. I choose to listen to that strong part of my brain. And obviously sometimes I still give in to the lower self. I still give in to that weak part of my brain. That's what happens. It's a long journey. It is a long journey, but you need to recognize that you can give power to your lower self or you can give power to your higher self. It is your choice. You have the ability to change your life. You are responsible for everything in your life. You are responsible for all the choices that you have made that have led you to where you are today. But at the same time, you have the power and ability to change your life, to start living for your higher self, to start becoming your higher self and make the right changes and choices in your life to be better, to improve. So brother, don't get offended right now, but chances are you are probably not good. You're probably a piece of shit. You're probably just a shitty version of yourself. That's why you clicked on this video. No shame because I have been there. I was a shitty fucking version of myself and I hated it. I hated myself. But the first belief I had to have was that I could be better, was that I could improve, was that, yeah, I am a piece of shit right now, but think about all the progress I could make. I can improve myself. And then the mindset shift I had to have was to kill the victim. It is not anybody's fault but my own for where I'm at in life right now. It is not anybody's fault but my own for being a piece of shit right now. You kill that victim mentality. You take ownership of your life. You take full responsibility of it. And with that said, we can move on to the beef of the video where I will be teaching you how to actually improve. Those mindset changes and belief changes are valuable and very important as the first step to becoming a better version of yourself. Okay, before we move on, I have an actionable step for you. You need to take action right now. Get up and clean your room. Clean your room. Your room is probably disgusting. If, if it's not disgusting, good on you, okay? But chances are your room is filled with Cheetos, Fritos, and bullshit. And cum-stained tissues. You need to clean that shit up. Put your clothes away, put it in your dirty hamper, wherever you fucking put it. Put it in the laundry, I don't care. Just clean your room, bro. If you can't just start to take action, if you can't even clean up your own environment, how do you expect to fix your life? If you can't even have a clean environment, clean surroundings, 
then how do you expect to change? Take action right now. If not right now, then take action right after this video. It's those little things that add up. It's those little things that your stupid lower self is gonna tell you, why do I need to do that? What's the point? What, what, how is a clean room gonna help me change my life? That's your lower self talking. That is the weak pussy version of you talking. And I don't wanna sound super offensive in this video because I know you're probably getting your feelings hurt right now, but I don't care about your feelings. You need to stop worrying about your feelings as well. You need to listen to your higher self. Would your higher self, the best version of yourself, have a clean room or a dirty room? That's what I thought. All right, let's go. Part two, mental health. It was back in 2019 and I was sitting in my college dorm room bong right in front of me, vape to my right, Xbox controller to my left. I had just smoked weed for the fifth time that day. And I sat back on the couch and was staring up at the TV screen, the home screen, the Xbox home screen in front of me. And I'm just staring at the TV, just empty. I felt nothing. I felt nothing inside. I had smoked weed for the fifth time that day. I barely even felt high. I just felt nothing. I felt worthless. I felt purposeless. I felt like a little bitch. And I was depressed. But I had just indulged in all this pleasure. I'm supposed to be having fun, right? I'm playing video games and smoking weed. Like, that's really fun, right? I felt nothing. I was numb. I was numb. I was in school, I was in college, and I had no even reason for being there. I didn't even have a major. I was what they call undeclared. I didn't even have a study. I didn't go to class. I stayed in my room and isolated myself. My roommate was out doing his thing, and I would just stay in my room and feel sad and feel like I had nothing to live for. I would just be sat there on the couch in my room, just overthinking, intrusive thoughts coming in, negative thoughts coming in, and I would just be caught up in my head, overanalyzing every thought, letting it spiral out of control, and becoming more and more anxious. And in order to feel something, I would reach back for the bong and try and smoke another bowl, just to feel something. But once again, nothingness, emptiness, I'm numb. So now I reach for my vape, start puffing on my vape, just to feel something. Nothing. Nothing. I was so down this rabbit hole that I, I barely even felt pleasure from the things that used to give me so much pleasure. But I didn't know what to do. My only thought was if I keep trying to escape my reality, life is better when I escape. Life is better when I'm high. Life is better when I'm on the hub, indulging in pleasure and getting these huge, massive dopamine spikes. Life is better that way. Because my real life had no meaning. My real life, I had no purpose. My real life, I was in a school that I hated. Surrounded by people that I didn't even really fuck with. Anxious and depressed. And you know what? Mental health, your mental health, is the most important thing that you need to worry about right now. It is the most important thing for improving yourself. It is the most important thing for actually changing your life. But... Back when I had this shitty mental health, when I was in this shitty situation, it was impossible for someone to convince me that I needed to do certain things to improve my mental health. Because when you are depressed and anxious, the last thing you want to do is work on yourself. The last thing you want to do is get out of bed, get off the couch. Trust me, I was, I was there. But eventually I went to a class. Finally, I actually got out of bed, got, got myself ready, went to one of my classes that I had been skipping for the whole semester so far. And I was sitting in class, and my thoughts were running out of control. They were spiraling. I was so anxious. I was so worried that the teacher was going to call on me and that I wouldn't know what to say and that I would make a fool of myself because I was just so just down. I was so anxious. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, I had my first panic attack ever in my entire life. My heart was beating out of control. I couldn't control it. I started profusely sweating. I stood up and ran out of that classroom. Ran out of that classroom in front of like 50 other kids. Ran back to my room. Back on the couch with the bong in front of me, the vape to my right, and the Xbox controller to my left in my comfort zone. 
I called my mom and I started crying. I said, I need to leave this place. I need to come home. So I did. I changed my environment. That's the first thing that helped me improve my mental health. It may not be a good option for you to completely change your environment, but that is what I did to ultimately get the ball rolling is I literally just went home. I needed to go home. And from there, I still had shitty mental health. I was still depressed, anxious. But like I was saying, when you are down bad and you are, when you have shitty mental health, the last thing you want to do is work on yourself. The last thing you want to do is get out of bed. So before I give you a few ways to improve your mental health, I just want to mention that you need something to live for. You need a core desire, something that you're going after. I had nothing. I didn't want to be in school. I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't like where I was at. I needed, I needed a different desire. I needed a different purpose in life. A lot of your depression comes from not having anything to do, not having something to strive for. So when I got home, I got a job. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't an important job. I was a pizza delivery driver. But it gave, me a new, it gave me a newfound sense of purpose that I had to get up and go to every single day. I had to get to work every single day. You need something to get you out of bed. You need something. You can't just stay in, inside all day and play video games all day long. You will never make any changes. And I know it's hard when you're depressed to make changes, but you have to force yourself. You have to stop listening to your lower self. Now I'm gonna give you three ways to improve your mental health and straight away when I tell you these things your brain is going to start making excuses as to why you can't why you shouldn't or why you won't but like I said don't listen to that lower self don't listen to that weak bitch side of your brain you must force yourself to take action the first thing you need to do is you need to force yourself to get outside more collect some of that sunlight breathe in some fresh air if you're sitting on your computer chair all day long of course you have shitty mental health. You deserve to have shitty mental health based on your actions, based on your choices, and based on everything that you do in your life. So get outside more. Just step outside and be in nature. It is one of the best things you can do for your mental health. It doesn't even have to be sunny. It doesn't even have to be sunny. You can literally just get outside and breathe some fresh air. Please, bro, I'm begging you. The next thing you're gonna want to start doing is force yourself to meditate one minute a day if you can't do more than if you can't do more than a minute just do one minute a day work your way up to doing five minutes a day and I know it's not going to do anything I know your brain is now telling you I don't want to do it I shouldn't do it force yourself to do it just five minutes a day there's a there's a really good app you can download called Oak I highly recommend it play around with it and start meditating every single day and watch what happens. You'll start to become more aware of your thoughts, you'll start to have more control over your thoughts and your mental health will improve. You must stick with it. Even if you are super depressed right now and you can barely get out of bed, you must force yourself to. And the last thing I want you to do is to write down three things, three to five things that you're grateful for every single day. You need to get in the habit of being grateful, of expressing gratitude, because I know you're depressed, I know you have shitty mental health, but you can still find things that you are grateful for. And by changing that frame of mind, by, by changing your mindset from I'm sad, I'm depressed, to I'm grateful, I'm grateful for being depressed right now, because you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce back and I'm going to become stronger because of it. I'm grateful for all these feelings of anxiety, all these overthinking negative thoughts. I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful that I just went outside for five minutes today because it's progress. I'm grateful that I am choosing myself. I'm grateful that I am improving my mental health. Just write down five things a day that you are grateful for. You pair those three habits together, get outside, meditate, gratitude journaling, and watch what happens. You will definitely see an improvement in your mental health. And there are other ways to improve your mental health, but we are starting with those three habits because the other ways have their own category in this video and I will touch on them later on. But just stick to those three habits. You got this. Part three, addiction. No matter what you are addicted to, porn, video games, weed, alcohol, other drugs, social media, no matter what you are addicted to, it is holding you back. You are a slave to that addiction. You have no control over your own mind. You have no control over yourself. I was addicted to many things. Vaping, weed, Adderall, social media, video games, porn, 
You name it. I was addicted to it because I was just chasing pleasure every single day, all day. That's all I lived for was pleasure. Your addictions are holding you back. I know you think because, oh, I'm hitting the gym or, oh, I'm, my mental health is okay, that it's okay to smoke weed, it's okay to vape. It's not okay. They're holding you back. You're a slave to those vices. So the way to quit any of your addictions is to recognize that you have a problem. Recognize that you are addicted. If you can't realize that you're addicted to something, that you have a problem with it, then you're never gonna change. You're never gonna quit. And you're never gonna improve your life. So recognize that it's a problem. Like you deep down know you must quit your addictions. You deep down know they are hurting you. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, they're hurting you. And here's what you need to know about quitting your addictions. After you recognize it's a problem, you need to realize that it's not gonna be easy. It's not supposed to be easy to quit something that you've been addicted to for however long you've been addicted to it for. It's not supposed to be easy. It's gonna hurt. You're gonna crave it. You're gonna fiend for it. You're gonna want to do it. You have to exercise your willpower and say no. And guess what? The first week is the hardest. With any addiction, the first week is the hardest. If you can get through just one week of your life to be free for the rest of your life, think about how valuable that is. You suffer for one week so you can be free for the rest of your life. You say no for one week. You don't give in to temptation for one week. You suffer. You sit in the fire for one week. And you are free for the rest of your life from that stupid, stinky little vice. And you know what? Each time you relapse, because you will, because it is very hard to quit an addiction. It doesn't mean you're going to give up. It means you keep bouncing back. Your, your willpower is getting stronger and stronger every time you are able to prolong the, the period of time where you don't give into it. Every time you can say no for a longer period of time, you're strengthening your willpower. And eventually you're going to beat this addiction. These, these addictions, if you have multiple, which you probably do. And the next thing you need to know about quitting your addiction is you have to change your identity. Instead of saying to your friends, oh yeah guys, I'm trying to quit video games. Oh yeah guys, I'm trying to quit vaping. You're never gonna quit, you're weak. That's a pussy mindset, you have to say, I quit. You have to say, I no longer am a smoker. I no longer play video games. And yeah, you might fail, but at least you're starting to change your identity. You're starting to switch your mindset around to be that of someone who doesn't do that thing. You don't do it anymore. But let's move on to the next part because it is probably one of the most important things that you must be doing. Part four, physical health. Before I even learned about how to improve mental health or how to quit addictions, the first thing I learned how to do was work on my body, was work on my physical health even though I was destroying my physical health with all the addictions I was doing. But at least the one thing I was doing was getting in the gym. You must be getting into the gym. You must be doing calisthenics if you're not getting into the gym. It's one or the other. You either do weights or you do calisthenics, which is body weight. And you can exercise daily. I don't care if people say don't exercise daily, you're overtraining. Think about it. If you're working out five times a week, at least on the other two days a week, go for a walk. That's exercise. That counts as exercise. It doesn't have to be intense training every single day. Dumbass. Don't just sit around all day on your off days. At least get outside and go for a walk. Or hit some push-ups. Daily exercise. And that is another way to actually improve your mental health as well. Starting to work out and building a body was the best thing I ever did. The best thing I ever did for myself. Because you know what? Your looks matter in today's day and age. They've always mattered, but your looks now, especially in today's modern world, they matter. Bro, you care about what you look like. You look at yourself in the mirror and you're ashamed of what you see. I used to be ashamed of what I saw because I was so skinny. I didn't like the way I looked. Chances are you don't like the way you look, but guess what? You can change it. Guess what? You can start to hit the gym. Even as a beginner, it doesn't matter. Just do body weight exercises in your room if you don't want to go to the gym. You have to frame your mindset to, okay, the time is going to pass anyway. So I can either start putting myself through this temporary discomfort and hitting push-ups or hitting pull-ups or hitting squats or going to the gym. I can put myself through this temporary discomfort to build a better body in the future. Or, like I said, the time is just going to pass anyway. So, Or I can just sit around and do nothing, keep doing what I'm doing and actually get a worse body. The time's gonna pass anyway, bro. You might as well use it. You might as well use it to build a body you're actually proud of. 
Think about it. Would your higher self have a, have a sick body? Yes, your best self would have a sick body. It all goes back to the beginning of the video where you stop listening to your lower self and you live for your higher self. This lower version of you wants you to be weak. This lower version of you has made you weak. This lower version of you will tell you that it's okay to not work out. Will tell you that as a man, you don't need to work out because a girl will just like you for who you are. That's bullshit advice because guess what? You like a girl because she has big butt and big boobies. That's bullshit advice. So start living for your higher self. What does he want? Would he hit the gym today? Of course he would. Would he get down and do push-ups today? Of course he would. Now in terms of your diet, if you're skinny, obviously like how I was, you need to bulk. You need to eat more. I have videos on my channel explaining what to eat, how to bulk, etc. So if you want, you can go check those out after this video. Now if you're fat, you gotta eat less, bro. You gotta lower that body fat percentage. That is not okay. As a man, you, you must be leaner. You cannot be a fat slob anymore. You have to work on it. You have to stop eating so much shitty foods. And even if you're skinny, you shouldn't eat shitty food. So what I'm talking about is no more fast food. No more McDonald's. That is so bad for you. That is ruining your health. No more fast food garbage. No more soda. Cut out the soda. Just drink water. No more processed foods. Here's an easy way to tell if you should eat it. How many ingredients does it have? If you look at the back of the box or the back of the label and it has a long list of ingredients, nine times out of 10, all those ingredients or most of those ingredients are just crap, are horrible for you. So the better way to go about it is to eat whole foods. Potatoes, it's one ingredient. Rice, it's one ingredient. Chicken, it's one ingredient. Broccoli, you get the point. Eat whole foods and honestly, I don't know if you're gonna take this advice, but track your calories, track your macros, and dial in your diet. If you're really serious about building a sick physique and building a better body, it is important that you track your macros. It is important that you track your calories so you can actually start to see the gains. If you're fat, you can actually step on the scale and see the number go down. Use MyFitnessPal, it's a free app to track your macros and calories. The next thing I'll say, if you're fat, you gotta be intermittent fasting. You cannot wake up and eat breakfast straight away. I know you're hungry, but the powerful thing about intermittent fasting is that when you wake up and you just drink water or black coffee, you have, you, you have no calories in you. So now your body is gonna burn your fat for fuel. It's gonna start burning your fat for fuel. You don't need food early in the morning. What have you done to deserve food? Just a little side rant, but it's very important if you wanna lose weight. Like intermittent fasting, one of the best ways to shred your fat. Now remember, stop listening to your lower self. So your lower self is gonna to try to tell you, don't go to the gym. Your lower self is gonna to try to tell you, don't hit those push-ups. Your lower self is gonna to try to keep you weak. But guess what? Every time you push through and hit those push-ups and go to the gym when you didn't feel like it, you are leveling up your discipline. And over time, you'll become more and more disciplined to the point where going to the gym is fun and working out is fun. Live for your higher self. What would your higher self do? He would build a body that makes him proud. He would start today. He would stop slacking and he would start today so he can build his dream 10 out of 10 physique. You got this, brother. I believe in you. Start today. The time's gonna pass anyway, so you might as well. Now let's move on. Part five, no fap. So it wouldn't be a proper self-improvement video without mentioning no fap. This is the catalyst of your self-improvement journey. This is gonna boost your progress because of all the energy that you gain from staying away from the hub and from stopping your constant <clears throat> releasing. You will gain so much energy by building up your seed, your life force energy. You will be able to transmute that energy into your, into your workouts, into your meditation, into reading books, into anything you want to improve yourself. This is the boost and catalyst of your journey. And if you've already known about NoFap or you've been on NoFap, you know what I'm talking about, you know the energy boost that you get. You know how good you feel, you know how masculine you feel. You know how you feel like such a loser when you're, when you're watching porn all the time? You know how you just feel like such a bitch? Yeah, when you stop that, you feel way better about yourself and this is one of the best ways to actually improve your mental health as well. Depression, gone. Anxiety, gone. When you stay away from the fucking hub. So here's the thing, you've been addicted to porn since you were what? 12 years old, 11 years old? I don't know how long it's been for you, but it's probably been five plus years. So you've been leveling up the skill of 
leveling up that skill since you were 12 years old and now you're trying to quit it, right? And you see online, even myself, I'm guilty of this. I post streak videos, no fap streak, because I know they get a lot of views. That's why I do it. But I try to mention in the video, like, bro, don't worry about the streak. Ignore the streak because you've been leveling up your skill of jacking it for so many years that it's going to take a little bit to actually quit it completely. Unless you're hard as fuck, unless you're like David Goggins and your mind is a freaking made of steel. But if you're like me and you're like every other normal person, you're gonna struggle at first. So don't worry about the streak. Stop worrying about the streak, it's not, it's not gonna help. It doesn't matter what day you're on, okay? It does not fucking matter. What matters is that you just stop doing it. What matters is that you tell yourself, I don't jerk off anymore. What matters is that when you get horny, you don't immediately think about the hub. You immediately think about, oh, let's go, let's transmute this energy. Or, oh, let's go talk to that pretty girl down the road because I know what it now takes to actually have sex instead of just pulling out your phone and going on the hub and getting an instant release. No, it takes more than that. It takes going to talk to a girl, it takes sparking a connection, it takes flirting. So you're now transmuting that horniness and that energy into better outlets. You need to focus on severing that connection of when you get horny that you immediately go to the hub. So if you're really struggling with nofap, think about it like this too. Your lower self is just trying to get you to go back to the hub. Trying to get you to keep jacking it. Would the best version of you, your higher self, actually want you to go back to the hub? Would the best version of you actually want you to be a little wanker? No. You're better than that. It takes willpower, it really does. It's like the hardest thing for any man to quit. But guess what? In order to be successful, focus on doing it less and less. So let's say for the month of August or whenever you're watching this video, for this month, literally count how many times you do it. Fucking cross off on your wall how many times you do it. Next month, do it less than that. Or if you don't wanna be a little bitch and you wanna actually just grab your nuts and just stop, then just stop. Just stop jerking off. Stop being a little bitch, just stop. I know it's hard, I know you're gonna have urges. It's like any addiction, bro. It takes willpower, it takes the strength of mind. If you're never able to master your sexual energy and stay away from the hub, how do you expect to become your best version? How do you expect to make any progress in life? You need to master it because you know how damaging porn is for your brain. You know what it's doing to you. You know it's keeping you depressed. You know it makes you feel like a loser. You know you have no confidence because of it. You know you have no energy because of it, so you got this, bro. Stay on nofap. Now let's move on to the next part, which is part six, purpose and goal setting. So here's the thing about purpose. Remember how I said in the mental health section where I said you need a reason to live, you need something to be striving for, you need a core desire, a main desire? That's all purpose is. You don't need to overcomplicate it. What is your main desire in life right now? Is it to build a sick physique? Is it to get strong? then put your energy towards that, towards building a better body. Is it to improve your mental health? Then yeah, still put your energy towards building a better body because that improves your mental health. Still focus on staying on nofap, still focus on meditating, reading, gratitude journaling, and getting outside more. If your goal, if your main desire right now is to study in school, then put your efforts towards your studies while keeping up with the other self-improvement habits. But the thing about purpose is we don't have to overcomplicate it. It's just, what's your main desire in life right now? My main desire in life right now is to help young men. My main desire in life right now is to improve the lives of young men around the world. So that is my purpose. You just need to think to yourself right now, what is your main desire? You have a main desire in life right now. It could be, I wanna sleep with girls. I wanna get a girlfriend. If your main desire is to get a girlfriend, okay, work on yourself, work on your body. That's your purpose. Just by setting a clear, defined, like, okay, I know what I'm going after in life right now, just by having that, it's just gonna help you so much mentally. Now you have purpose in your life, which we all so desperately need. It doesn't have to be some, oh, I, I wanna save the world type purpose. It just needs to be, what's your core desire right now in your life? What is your main desire right now in your life? That's all it is. And once you complete that mission, then you move on to the next core desire in your life. And you keep dissolving these layers and layers of purpose. We don't need to go there, but purpose is, is not that complicated. Just find your main desire and attack it. And now goal setting. Once you know your purpose, once you know what you're going after, you need to have clear goals. If you don't have goals, then how do you know what you're trying to achieve? The thing about goals too is they are very powerful. If you write down your goals, you literally write them out and you put them on your wall, like I do, right in front of my face, you put your goals on your wall, your mind will see them every single day and subconsciously, your brain will think of ways for you to achieve those goals. It's powerful, I'm, I'm not fucking making that shit up, it's powerful. 
have goals and relentlessly attack them, relentlessly chase them. And when you achieve your goal, you set a new goal. And don't worry, your goals can change. Like if something's not working out, then change your goal. If you accomplish your goal sooner than you thought, okay, change it, make it bigger, make your goals bigger. Your goals can change. The important thing is that you actually just take the time to think about what your goals are. What are your 2023 goals, 2024 goals, if you're watching this next year? Basically, they should be aligned with your purpose. They should be aligned with what your main core desire is in life. So if your goal is to build a better body, okay, your goal should be, my goal is to build 10 pounds of muscle by the end of the year. Easy as that. My goal is to be able to bench press this amount of weight by this time. Now we got another actionable step. You need to take action right now. Get out a piece of paper and write down your goals and then tape them on your wall. Literally smack them on your wall, slap them there and leave them there so that they're right in front of you. And if you need to change them, so be it, change them. But take action right now and write down your goals. What are you striving for? What are you looking to achieve? Let's move on to the next part. Part seven friends and relationships. So back in 2020, when I learned about self-improvement and I started to actually make really good progress in my life, I was building a better body, I was gaining muscle, my mental health was improving because I was meditating every day, I was reading every day, I wasn't so caught up in all this pleasure, I had quit my addictions, I no longer saw those friends who I was doing these addictions with, who I was smoking weed with, who I was drinking with every weekend. And I started to outgrow my friends you will find that this might happen on your self-improvement journey. It probably will happen where you start to outgrow your friends and you are no longer compatible with the same video game nerds, with the same weed smokers, with the same, I hate to say it, but losers in your life. You are no longer compatible with them. So here's the thing. You will notice one of two things. One, your friends will support you and they will try to improve with you. They will be supportive of what you're trying to accomplish. They will be like excited about the fact that you're now going to the gym and they will ask, hey, can I come to the gym with you? Or, hey, what are you, what is, what are you doing? Are you like no fap? Like they'll ask questions and they'll be excited for you. Or two, they will try to drag you down. They'll try to keep you stuck because they are feeling insecure about you making progress. They feel like, oh shit, he's now better than me. Let's try to bring him down. These are the people you want to cut off. Number two, you want to cut off these people. Over here, these are the guys that you want to build with. These are your brothers. By the way, quick little plug, Brotherhood Discord, link in the description if you're trying to find friends that are on the same path as you. Great place to be. Positive community. Brotherhood Discord. Check it out. I'm in there. You can get closer to me, talk to me, make friends with other guys on self-improvement. But like I was saying, when you make progress in real life, you'll start to you'll start to outgrow your friends. It's, it's inevitable. But quickest way to know is if one, they support you, or two, they're trying to drag you down. If they're trying to drag you down, cut them off. Cut them off. They're not gonna serve you anymore. What you can try to do is convince them to get on self-improvement with you. But here's the thing, nine times out of 10, the guy's gonna be pathetic and just and make excuses as to why he just doesn't wanna do it, why he doesn't wanna improve himself. So you can't you can't convince him. You gotta leave it at that. Think about how hard it is for you to improve yourself. Now you're trying to improve yourself and try to make someone else improve themselves. You can't spend mental energy on that. It's gotta be their decision. They have to make it for themselves. But if you can get your friends onto self-improvement with you, that is the ideal situation. If you cannot, then oh well, you might have to walk a lonely road for a while. You might have to be a lone wolf for a little while until you find like-minded friends. By the way, you can still have like a good social life and be on self-improvement. You don't have to be just this square who never does anything fun. Like, I get it. If you wanna still see some of your friends who do the bad habits and you wanna indulge every now and again, that's okay, but don't let them suck you down. Don't let them destroy your self-improvement journey. You can do that every once in a while. You don't have to completely cut them out, but honestly, you're just you're better off cutting them out completely and focusing on yourself. Because you know what happened to me is when I started going back to some of these friends, I'd find myself overthinking while I'm with them. I'd find myself thinking about wanting to improve. I'd find myself thinking, damn, I wish I just went to the gym instead. Damn, I wish I could be at home reading. Damn, I wish I could just be by myself so I could just focus on leveling up. If that happens, then maybe it's best that you don't hang out with them at all because that's what happened to me. I started overthinking it and realizing, you know what, I'd rather be at home working on myself. Straight up. Now, the next thing I want to touch on is your relationships. So, 
as you get better and better, as you start to progress, girls will naturally want to be a part of your life because they see that you are on a mission, they see that you have potential, they see that you are building a, a sexy physique. It is very important that if a girl does enter your world, she does enter your life, that you stay on your shit. You don't get complacent because that is the fastest way for her to lose interest in you. That is the fastest way for her to start resenting you and she will leave you. You have to stay on your shit and not get complacent. Now here's how you tell if she's a keeper. If when she enters your life, you stay on your shit and you are now achieving your goals faster than before she was in your life. So her feminine energy is providing you just with like clarity to achieve and attack your goals faster. She's a keeper, bro. But if she enters your life and you are now falling back into the bad habits, you're doing all this bullshit with her, get rid of her. Cut her off. Get rid of her. She is not serving you. Last thing I'll say is be open to a relationship when you're on self-improvement. It's cool. Be open to it. But if you're just starting out and you have shitty mental health and you can't even go a week without relapsing on NoFab and you keep fucking skipping the gym, you need to just not worry about women at all. You need to just focus on yourself before you find a girl, before a girl finds you. You need to just better yourself so you can actually attract a good one. Otherwise, you're just going to be attracting shitty girls in your life that, that will tear you down and keep you stuck at where you are. Whew-wee, this has been a long video. You still with me, bro? You still with me? All right, let's move on to the last part. Part eight, habit tracker and daily routine. So what is a habit tracker? This is something that is going to be your best friend on your self-improvement journey. This is something that is going to keep you accountable. It is something that is going to help you be more consistent with all the habits you are trying to implement. It's literally what it says in the name. It's a way to track your habits. So I just made a video on it, but I'm gonna explain it here in this video too because I want this video to be super valuable. So what you do is you get out a blank sheet of paper. It can have lines on it. It can, have, it can be a blank white piece of paper. It doesn't matter. Just get out a blank piece of paper and in the top left corner, you're gonna write the month. Then underneath that, you're gonna write each day of the month. If you're starting it in the middle of a month, start it with that day of the month. For me, I'm doing it for the month of August, so I'm gonna start with the first day of the month and work my way down to the last day of the month. From there, you want to now add in each habit that you are trying to do from left to right at the top of the page. And this is the best way to track your habits. It does not have to be as neat as mine. My, I'm a very, I'm a freak when it comes to like organization, so I like to make mine neat with straight lines. Yours does not have to look pretty at all. It's just a way to track your habits. And when you complete that habit for the day, you cross it out. You put an X or a check. So when you meditate today, you put a check. When you exercise today, you put a check. When you gratitude journal today, you put a check. And at the end of the month or at the end of the week, however, like every, every day you're going to be looking at this habit tracker and you're going to see that some days you miss shit. Some days you don't do what you're supposed to do. But it's a way to keep you accountable. And it's a way to just always remind you like, all right, I got to do this stuff. This is going to benefit me. This is going to help me improve my life. It sounds so simple, but like I said, your lower self right now is telling you, I don't want to do that. I don't need to do that. What's the point of doing that? Remember, your lower self's a little bitch though, so don't listen to him. Your higher self would make a habit tracker. Your higher self would not think that it's beneath him. Your higher self would say, no, that helps me stay accountable. I love the habit tracker. The habit tracker is my best friend. The habit tracker is how I make progress on self-improvement. So now the next way to add some structure into your life is to have a daily routine. And I want you to write down your daily routine. So I'll show you mine, I'll put it up on screen. That is how disciplined you need to be. That is how regimented you need to be. It is vital to use a habit tracker and to make a daily routine to make the most progress and to keep you on your shit. Your daily routine is going to be your ideal day. I know you're gonna mess it up. I know some days you're not gonna do everything on there or something's gonna get in the way, you have an appointment, you have whatever but it is your ideal day that you try to follow as best as you can. And if you need to change it, then change it. By having it and by, and by putting it up on your wall, it's right in front of you. You now know at what time of day you should be doing what. Your ideal day, your most productive day. So don't write in, oh, play video games. Fuck that. Your ideal day. You saw mine, you can base it off of mine, but your work tasks are gonna look different than mine. The hours that you work are gonna look different than mine probably, or you're in school, so just write out what time you're in school from. Whatever you're doing in your life, just have that daily routine and it will guide you, it's your guide. Don't listen to your brain that's telling you right now, fuck that, I don't wanna do that. Instead, take action and right now, 
The last actionable step of this video is to make yourself a habit tracker. It takes two minutes. And then to write out your daily routine, it takes another two minutes. So spend four minutes right now doing those things and, and just get to work. Take action. The best version of you is waiting. You need to kill that inner bitch. Kill that lower self. He is the reason you are where you are today. But now, by listening to your higher self and by doing things that your best self would do, you are going to start to see changes in your life and you are going to start to improve your life drastically. Wow, if you got this far into the video and you watched from start to finish and you're still with me and you didn't fuck around and, you, and I had your attention the whole time, thank you, bro. Good on you. Good on you. Give a comment right now. Say you watched the whole thing from start to finish and yeah, just let me know. I wanna know who watched it from start to finish. I wanna know if this genuinely helped you because I genuinely hope that it did. I hope that this is going to change lives. I put a lot of work into this video. It may not seem like it, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I hope this video helped. And I'm rooting for you. I'm on your side. I know what it's like to be so down bad and depressed and have a body you're not proud of and be addicted to so many bullshit things. I know what it's like, so I'm on your side. This is your guide to escaping that shitty reality. Take it, use it, take action, join our brotherhood. There's a link in the description for our Discord. I'll see you in there. Like the video if you want, comment if you want, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.